Good morning, Word of Life Church and all of our faithful YouTube friends. I want to wish you a happy Easter. Boy, what a, a glorious day today is. It's a day of celebration. You know, I think of uh, the fact that we truly serve a risen Savior, that maybe the old things and the old dead things are, are now passed away with and behold, they're made alive in Christ and through Christ. And we're going to tell you all about that just as we get into today's service. So, if you've brought your Bible, I'm kind of dressed up a little bit today, just in honor of today, uh, the good news of today. But, you know, just as I was thinking of the uh, the past couple of days, I was been reading a fair bit on the true crucifixion of Christ and what he went through and the denial and the betrayal and the bruising and the beating and the disfigurement. Matter of fact, you know, if you, if you uh, actually, let, let's just get right into the word here. We'll do our little antique thing next week. But uh, um, I just want to, just because it, today is such a special day, and uh, we want to just really look at the Word and what it has to talk about. Um, but uh, let's go over to the book of Isaiah. And if you think about the fall of man, that's really why Jesus was on his way to redeem mankind, was because of the fall of man. The Bible says that you and I are actually born into sin. And so, therefore, <clears throat> you know, religion would have you spend the rest of your day sort of trying to make right what's gone on in your life. The fact that, you know, we have a sinful nature, that we're born into sin. We, we you know, we, we could try so hard to do everything right. But at the end of the day, you know, even the fact that, uh, you know, you're trying to do everything right, it just shows that the sin nature tries to come out. I remember hearing a joke years ago of a, uh, a church that gave a badge. It was a badge of humility. And they gave it to the most humble man in church. There's this big badge that said, I'm the most humble man in church. And by the end of the service, he had to give it back. And so that's sort of a play on words there. But really what that's indicating is that no matter how much you and I try and do everything right, there's always going to be opportunity for us to fall in sin. And that's the reason why Jesus, he had to actually come. He was born to redeem mankind once and for all. Be, so as we go at, at Isaiah 53, I want us to just have a look. This was a, a, a foretelling of what was going to go on and what was paid for for you and I. And so in Isaiah 53, verse 4, this is what's happened on the cross now as we celebrate a, a Resurrection Sunday. It says, Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow, yet we esteemed him stricken. He was smitten by God and afflicted, but he was bruised for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. For we are all like sheep that have gone astray, and we've turned every one to his own way. Yet the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so he is sort of, if you would, our scapegoat. I saw a picture, uh, you know, that of a lot of Easter lambs. It was a stockyard showing. It was just Thousands and thousands of lambs that were going to go and be sacrificed representing Easter. And it was kind of a sad picture for me to look at that. But also in the sense of, if you think about it, the fact that we get to celebrate Jesus once and for all. Once and for all, Jesus came and gave his life. So the sacrificial lamb, and, and when they, you know, matter of fact, over in, in uh, uh, Hebrews, it talks about that. It says here, uh, Hebrews 9 verse 12, it says, not with the blood of goats, and calves, but with his own blood, he entered once and for all the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. Now that's the beautiful part of being a Christian, that once and for all, Jesus has paid the ultimate price for you and I. And so as we think about Easter and what Jesus had went through, the Bible says the iniquity of us all was laid on him. It said that number one, it said that uh, we've, we've all gone astray. You know, the Bible says that we're all yet sinners. And so as you think about that, and you know, we don't even like to talk about the word sin anymore because it sounds like, oh boy, you're a sinner. But the bottom line is you're a sinner that's been saved by grace. And when you receive that free gift of salvation, suddenly your righteousness is not something that you can do. Kind of like the man wearing the badge walking around being the most humble man. In your own works, you can't do that. You can maybe last a little bit, you know. Maybe we could say, well, if we we're just the best Christians while we're sitting in church, but it doesn't take long and that quickly changes. And so when you recognize that Jesus had to come and pay his price, pay the price, you see, Adam and Eve at the fall of man, that's what's called the fall of man, when they fell into sin and gave up, if you would, the authority or the right to walk with God, God didn't ask them to do it. Matter of fact, he gave them such choice 
but they chose to follow what Satan said and go after the knowledge of good and evil. And when they did, they ate of the tree. And at that point, everything changed. The Bible says that Satan actually became the God of this world. And so what you see going on in this world, it's not God like the big puppeteer orchestrating all of these things. This is actually all part and play, uh, part, it's playing its part, if you would, in the fall of man. But because of all what's gone on, Jesus had to come. So from the beginning of time, you know, the Bible says in Genesis that, that uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so we know that in the very beginning, Jesus was the word and he was with God. And so he was on his way to redeem mankind from the very, very beginning. And because of that, that's the hope that we hang on. Now you think of the prodigal son. He kind of went his own way. He wanted his inheritance to do his own thing. But it said that the father looked for him every single day to bring him back. You and I might be in a prodigal son uh, uh, situation in our lives. Maybe we've wandered from God. Maybe we haven't recognized that Jesus has paid that eternal price for your full redemption. Maybe you haven't recognized that the iniquity in your life has been laid on Jesus. Maybe you're doing things like the blood of goats and calves. Maybe you're trying to find ways to somehow get God to be happy with you. And I challenge you in this today. Because of this, it says that the Lord laid on the iniquity on Jesus so that you and I have the right to become a son of Jesus, that we have been called the righteousness of God in Christ, or if you would, join heirs with him to become part of the family of God. Now, you see, I know your mind really has a hard time. You say, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that you're giving your life over to Jesus. You're taking the sin and the, and, and the iniquity and the things that have gone wrong in your life, and you're handing them over to him because of the cross. And then we get to say, today is a new day because we're now born again. We've been made brand new in Christ, you know? And so let's just uh, look at a couple more scriptures here. So that was over in Isaiah that the Lord laid on the iniquity of us all. And then remember we read in Hebrews that said, your eternal redemption has been paid for once and for all. So what do you do when you say, well, pastor, I, I believe that and I've received Jesus, but you know, it might be Eastern. And you know, sometimes it feels like I only ever get involved with God when it's really, really important, or I feel like I've just fallen so far away. Well, number one, if you've received Jesus into your heart, the word says eternal redemption has been bought and paid for, for you. So just like the prodigal son, you need to simply come home because he's looking for you every single day. The father is looking for you every day. Now, you remember the, 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 the brother, he got all bent out of shape because here the prodigal son was, you know, just living in a real low state. And yet God so welcomed him back. God is welcoming you back today. Maybe it's time that you say this Easter occasion when Jesus has risen from the dead and he is alive now and he wants to be alive in your life. He wants to be alive in you. And that's a personal choice that only you can make. You see, maybe you're trying to work out your salvation by, you know, doing good works and, and trying to somehow be super religious and making sure you always say the right thing and always do the right thing. That gets exhausting because you just can't do it. You need to try. I'm not trying to give you an example here where you can just say, well, you just be a rough, tough old person, be anything you want, and God will still love you. God will still love you, but God requires of us to begin to act as Jesus would, to think like he would. You know, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ, to allow our heart to begin to, to talk to us and say, you know what, I think you could change that action that you're doing, or I think you could talk better than you have been, or, you know, as you begin to grow in him, you essentially want to be more like him. You know, it's really cool as I watch Maya grow up and she's just such a delight as a, as a, a grandparent. It's just, it's amazing having a grandchild. I said to Sam, we should have had our grandchildren first. But anyway, um, it's such a delight. But what's even more neat is watching Maverick want to be just like his sister. Now, it's just amazing. He wants to follow her around and do the things that she does. He wants to just be like his sister. He wants to be just, and I'm sure those will change someday. Don't get me wrong. He still loves his Tonka truck. But what I'm getting at is he just loves to just be with her and to hang out with her. And so really that's what God is looking for in you and I in, in our life. You know, you picture in Sunday school, you always saw that picture of Jesus carrying the lamb with the broken leg and that broken leg was all bandaged up and he carried that lamb. Well, if you study that picture out or, you know, anyway, learn a little bit about sort of the thought around that was that as the, the, the little lamb spent so much time with the shepherd, they walked, 
And I'm sure the shepherd would talk to him and he would probably bat a little bit and act like he understood, but he really didn't. But he had a broken leg, so he was hanging with the shepherd. And eventually when that leg was finally healed, he had spent so much time with the shepherd, he knew what it meant to walk and talk, if you would, and be with the shepherd. Now that picture, if you were thinking about that, we've all saw that picture in Sunday school hanging in a church somewhere. But that's really what God wants. He wants us to be so with him that when you're in a broken state, when you're just, you don't know which end is up, when you just don't know how you can just celebrate, uh, you know, the birth of Christ, the death of Christ and the, the risen savior that we're talking about. When you really begin to think about this, number one, if you've been the prodigal son, I challenge you to come home. And he came to himself and said, you know what? It's just a whole lot better coming home or at home. I'm coming home. You might get ridiculed for being a Christian. Maybe you'll get made fun of. Maybe you say, oh, your old life was so much more fun. God's not trying to steal your fun, but let, let, me, let me ask you this. Those things that cause us to fall into sin or to walk in sin, A, they cost us more than we, we really want to pay, and B, there's just such a price at the end. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but Jesus has come to give you life and life in abundance. I challenge you today as we think about this Easter day where he is risen from the dead. He is alive forevermore. As you're just <clears throat> uh, thinking about that, I want us to think about the one last scripture we talked about. It says, not with blood and goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered once and for all. He paid for once and for all. So as you're contemplating giving your life to Jesus, as you're contemplating allowing yourself to be like that lamb that just surrounds himself with the shepherd and even in your broken state, understand this. Jesus is risen and he is alive forevermore. He wants to do amazing things in your life. And that's why we serve a risen Savior today. Today is Easter Sunday. A risen Savior we serve because our sin is bought and it is paid for once and for all. I challenge you, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, only you can make that decision. Religion can't do it for you. Good works can't do it for you. Not even killing all kinds of sheep and all kinds of those lambs and all of those things to sacrifice. Those are sacrifices that have been done away with because of Jesus once and for all. So I just encourage you today, wouldn't you give your heart over to Jesus? Just receive that free gift of salvation that he's offering you. It's your choice. Pray with me if you would. Let this be the most important Easter that you could ever celebrate. Lord Jesus, right now, I give you my life. I give you all of my setbacks and all of my hard work of trying to somehow please you. And I believe that you pleased, Father God, because you gave your life once and for all. You shed your blood once and for all, just for me. And right now, I receive the free gift of salvation. I ask that my sins would be washed away and be made new. And today... Your word says, today is the day of salvation. If you've prayed that prayer today, that is the most important prayer you could ever pray. Today is the most important day that you could ever have. Because Jesus is not only alive forevermore as the world celebrates, he's now alive in you. Amen. God bless you. Reach out to us. Let us know that you love this sermon. If you did, if you didn't, well, I guess let us know too. And, uh, but you know, if you have any prayer requests, please uh, just get in, get in touch and uh, let's celebrate the fact that today we have a risen Savior. Amen. God bless.